Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage, and we're back with another of our five minute histories videos. And today we're gonna to talk about the Lord Baltimore Hotel behind me. I'm right here near the corner of Charles and Baltimore streets. And for those of you who are not in on the secret, that is ground zero for Baltimore street numbering system. Uh, Baltimore street is sort of like the equator. Everything north of there uh, is designated as North something, North Utah, North Charles. And everything south of there is designated as South something. Um, the uh, Charles Street is sort of like the prime meridian, um, only going east and west. Um, so we are literally here dead center of uh, downtown Baltimore. Um, all right, but we're going to talk about the Lord Baltimore Hotel, not street number. Um, when it opened in 1928, it made quite the splash. It was the uh, biggest hotel in Maryland at the time, 22 stories tall, 700 rooms, um, uh, seating over 1,200 people. Its banquet facility was the biggest in the state, um, except when the fifth Regiment Armory was turned into a banquet facility. Um, uh, but it was not the first hotel on the site. We are just a stone's throw away from where the 1904 fire started. And like much of the 60 acres of downtown that was burned, um, this site was pretty much leveled in the fire. Uh, but a young gentleman named Harry Bussick uh, took that as his opportunity to move up in the hotel world. Uh, Bussick had been, uh, got his start as a clerk um, at a hotel called the Carrollton Hotel. And then he became manager of something called the New Howard Hotel. But in 1904, he bought this parcel um, and built uh, an eight-story hotel called the Caswell Hotel. Um, and Bussick apparently was quite good at running hotels uh, because the Caswick, uh, Caswell uh, did very, very well. So well that by the 1920s, um, Bussick was thinking big and uh, really thinking big, thinking like the Palmer House Hotel in Chicago or the Vanderbilt Hotel in New York. He wanted one of those here in, in uh, Baltimore. Um, so in the 1920s, he bought two more parcels next to his hotel and then went up to New York and found uh, one of this country's premier hotel architects, William Lee Stoddard. Um, Stoddard had gotten his training at Columbia University and then became a specialist in, in grand hotels. Um, he built Charleston's Francis Marion Hotel. He built Harrisburg's, the state capital's um, Penn Harris Hotel. And he built Birmingham's uh, Tutwiler Hotel, uh, which sadly was demolished. Um, so uh, with Stoddard's help, uh, uh, Bussick builds um, this wonderful building here, 22 stories tall, 700 uh, rooms. The uh, grand entryway is 5,000 square feet uh, uh, with marble on the floors and the walls, brass rails leading up to that uh, enormous banquet hall. The rest of the hotel has terrazzo marble tile floors decorated in this Renaissance style. Um, so really quite uh, almost over the top uh, in its grandeur. Uh, but maybe the uh, most signature thing about the hotel um, is not only its size, but its roof. If you look at the building, it's shaped like a U. That was a pretty common shape for big hotels. It allows light to get into uh, all of the rooms. Um, but on top of this 17-story tall U is a five-story tower. And the tower itself is capped with a wonderful copper mansard roof. And if you look in downtown Baltimore, there today there are really only three buildings that have signature roofs uh, that rival it. One is 10 Light Street, just a block or so away, um, built in 1929, so just a year after. The other is the Bromo Seltzer Tower, which of course, uh, I guess you can call that a roof. I don't even know what you call it, but it is wonderful. We used to have a building called the Tower Building, but it did not make it through urban renewal uh, and was demolished. So there are really only three with this signature roof. Um, after this, uh, Art Deco took hold. Um, uh, another tall building downtown was the, um, uh, the Hutzler Tower um, over near Lexington Market. Um, but then after that, uh, modern architecture took hold, and modern architects really didn't like fancy roofs at all. They're pretty much just flat. So the roof here uh, is really spectacular and does a great deal to help Baltimore skyline. Um, Bussick, uh, when, the, when the hotel opens in 1928, uh, everything is going well, but only for a short while. Sadly, Harry dies not too long after the opening. His family continues to operate the hotel, however, until 1960 when they sell it to another hotel operator. Um, on opening day, uh, WBAL uh, live broadcast 
West. Uh, all of the big wigs are there, the mayor, the governor, members of the uh, Lord Baltimore family. Um, and the hotel continues to do well through the Depression, maybe miraculously. Um, in World War II, it still was renting out rooms, but only a few, as most of its rooms uh, were going to the war effort. Um, and there were some changes along the way. In 1938, the building got air conditioning, I think thankfully probably to all those summer guests. And in 1944, the Busick family engages two notable artists, um, John and Mabel Giorgi, uh, to paint wonderful scenes of Maryland in its uh, hotel meeting rooms. Um, and uh, uh, the hotel continues to do well even after World War II um, as suburban flight uh, takes hold and then urban renewal. Other downtown uh, uh, hotels across the country are folding and being demolished. Here in Baltimore, the Belvedere Hotel is converted into uh, condominiums. Um, the Southern Hotel is converted into an engineering school and then demolished. And the Emerson Hotel is just demolished outright. So the Lord Baltimore is really um, has had a miraculous long run. Today, I believe, uh, in this era of COVID still, the st uh, city is using it uh, to house people who need housing. Um, but it recently had a, a pretty big renovation project uh, in it. And I think after COVID, or even today, um, it's doing well and will continue to be a core part of this uh, center city Baltimore for years to come. All right, thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.